Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. So, how are you all as your learners? I hope you all are doing great and engaging yourself in some self-learning. In this part 26, I present to you a mixed bag of 20 questions that will introduce you to the various Azure concepts and will also help you secure higher marks in AZ900. And please watch the video till the very end. There is a free PDF file waiting for you containing all the questions and the answers from the previous part 25 and this part 26. So without any further delay, let's dive in. So let's begin part 26 with question number 481. It says that which of the following best explains cloud computing? The first option is delivery of computing services over the internet. The second one is setting up your own data center. And lastly, we have capital expenditure. And the correct answer for this question is option A, delivery of computing services over the internet. And now we have question number 482. It says that which of the following is not a feature of cloud computing? Your options are latest technology. Second option is a limited pool of services. And then we have flexible resources. And lastly, economics of scale. And the correct answer for this question is option B, a limited pool of services. So whenever you're using cloud computing, you always have the latest technology, flexible resources and economics of scale and virtually you have unlimited pool of services. That's why option B is not a feature of cloud computing. Moving on with the question number 483, it says Microsoft Office 365, Xbox Live and Microsoft Intune is an example of software as a service or SaaS model. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. All these services given here are example of software as a service. And now comes question number 484. It says Azure HD Inside is an Apache Spark based analytics service. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. So what is the correct service? Well, Azure Databricks is the Apache Spark based analytics service. But this one here, HD Inside is not the correct service. That's why no is the correct answer. Moving on, question number 485 says that with a composition based plan, you pay a fixed rate for all the data sent to or from virtual machines hosted in the cloud. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. And now comes question number 486. It says with a consumption based plan, you reduce overall cost by paying only for the extra capacity when it is required. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. Quickly moving to the question number 487, it says which of the following describes platform as a service or pass model? Your options are users are responsible for purchasing, installing, configuring and managing their own software. And the second option is users create and deploy applications quickly without having to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure. And lastly, we have users pay an annual or monthly subscription. The correct answer for sure is option B, where users have to create and deploy applications quickly. That is the core essence of platform as a service and they do not have to worry about the underlying infrastructure. Coming up next is question 488. It says that your company has data centers in Los Angeles and New York. The company has a Microsoft Azure subscription and you are configuring two data centers as geo cluster sites for data resiliency. And now you need to recommend an Azure storage redundancy option. You have the following data storage requirement. The first one is data must be stored on multiple nodes. And then we have data must be stored on nodes in separate geographic locations. And lastly, we are given with data can be read from secondary location as well as from the primary location. Which of the following Azure storage redundancy option should you recommend? Your options are geo redundant storage. The second option is read only geo redundant storage. Thirdly, zone redundant storage. And lastly, locally redundant storage. And the correct answer for this question is option B, read only geo redundant storage. Now friends, in case you are confused between geo redundant storage and read only geo redundant storage and trying to think why I picked read only geo redundant, here is the explanation. So basically geo redundant storage, which is the option one, replicates your data to another physical location in the secondary region to protect against the regional outages. However, the data is available to be read only if the customer or the Microsoft initiates a failover from the primary to the secondary region. Please mark my word only if customer or Microsoft initiates a failover 
from the primary to the secondary region. But here my friends in this question the requirement C says that data can be read from the secondary location as well as from the primary location. Which means that question is demanding an automatic fail over and that is not possible in geo redundant storage. That's why read only geo redundant storage is the correct answer. Coming up to the question number 489 it says that you are the data engineer for your company and application uses no SQL data to store data. The database uses key value and white column no SQL database type. Developers need to access data in the database using an API and now you need to determine which API to use for the database model and the type. Which two APIs should you use? Your options are Cassandra API, Table API, MongoDB API, SQL API or Gremlin API. And the two correct APIs for this question is option A Cassandra API and option C MongoDB API. And this is because both Cassandra API and MongoDB API have key value pair which is the requirement of the question as well. And now we have question number 490 which says which of the following is a logical unit of Azure services that links to an Azure account. Your options are Azure subscription, second option is management group and the third one is resource group. And undoubtedly the correct answer for this question is option A Azure subscription. Coming up for you is question number 491. It says which of the following refers to the spending of money upfront and then deducting that expense over the time. Your options are capital expenditure, operational expenditures or supply and demand. The correct answer for this question is capital expenditure. So always remember capital expenditures are the expenditure in which you spend a big amount of money upfront and then you keep deducting that expense over the time. However, on the other hand, the operational expenditures these are those expenditures that are recurring in the nature. So for example, your monthly bill of your mobile, TV subscriptions, your salaries, all these are recurring in nature. That's why they are categorized as operational expenditures. And now we have question number 492 which says which cloud model provides the greatest degree of ownership and control? Your options are hybrid, private and public. The correct answer most surely is option B, private. Moving on to the question number 493, it says which cloud model provides the greatest degree of flexibility? Once again, the options are hybrid, private and public and the correct answer this time is option A, hybrid cloud. And please do not get confused between question number 492 and this question 493. In the previous question, we were talking about the greatest degree of ownership and control. That was undoubtedly private cloud. But this one is talking about greatest degree of flexibility and that is hybrid cloud. Why so? Because hybrid cloud is the combination of public cloud and the private cloud. That's why it offers the highest degree of flexibility. And now question number 494 says that which of the following Azure service should you use to download published audit reports and how Microsoft builds and operates its cloud services. Your options are Azure Policy, Service Trust Portal, Azure Monitor or Power BI. The correct answer for this question is option B Service Trust Portal. Coming up next question number 495 says that choose an international organization that develops international standards for privacy and compliance. Your options are international governmental and defense agencies. The second option is general data protection regulation which is better known as GDPR. The third option is international civil defense organization and lastly we are given with international organization for standardization which is also known as ISO. And the correct answer for this question is option D ISO. And now we have question number 496 which is a drag and drop kind of question and in this question you have to match these services these Azure services given on the left to the definitions given on the right. So what are the Azure services we are given with? We are given with Azure Government, GDPR, ISO and NIST. So let's read the first definition. It says an organization that defines international standards across all industries. We just read this in the previous question. This is none other than the ISO. The second definition says an organization that defines standards used by United States government and the correct answer for this question is NIST. Thirdly, we are given with a European policy that regulates data privacy and data protection. This one is GDPR and lastly, we are given with a dedicated public cloud for federal and state agencies in the United States and this one my friends is Azure government. 
Question number 497 says that you need to identify the type of failure for which an Azure availability zone can be used to protect access to Azure services. What should you identify? Your options are a storage failure, an Azure region failure, a physical server failure or an Azure data center failure. And the correct answer is an Azure data center failure. So just so you understand when you are using Azure availability zone, it always protects you from Azure data center failure. Coming up next is question number 498. It says that use DDoS protection service in combination with a web application firewall for protection both at dash and in the bracket we are given with layer 3 and layer 4 offered by DDoS protection standard and then we are given with and at the dash and in the bracket we are given with layer 7 offered by WAF and the options given are physical security, identity and access, parameter, network, compute, application and data. And the correct answer for this question is option D network and option F application. So please my network will come here which is at layer 3 and layer 4 and application will come in the second blank which is at layer 7. And here comes question number 499. It says a company is planning on hosting an application on a set of virtual machines. The virtual machines are going to be running for a prolonged duration of time. Which of the following should be considered to reduce the overall cost of virtual machine usage? Your options are premium disk. The second option is virtual machine scale sets. And then we have Azure reservation. And lastly, we have Azure resource groups. And the correct answer for this question is Azure reservations. So in case my friends, you're designing an application and you know that you are going to use a virtual machine for a prolonged period of time, let's say for one year or three years. In that case, it is always advisable that you reserve a virtual machine for one year or three years in advance. And this will also give you a lot of discounts from Microsoft. And here comes question number 500. And I think all you cloud learners, all you Azure cloud learners deserves a round of applause. So let's read the question. It says which resources can be used as a source for a network security group inbound security rule. Your options are application security rule only. The second option is IP address only. Thirdly, we have service tags only. And lastly, we have IP addresses, service tags and application security groups. And the correct answer for this question is my friends option D IP addresses service tags and application security groups. And for all of you who have been learning with us so consistently that we have now reached the milestone of question number 500. This is the free takeaway PDF for you containing all the questions from part 25 and 26. And you have to tell me what are the correct answers for the question number 466. 479, 480, which we discussed in the part 25. And then you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 487, 490 and 499, which is from this part 26. And you can send in your answers in the comment section below or email us at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com. And please note my friends, this offer, this free PDF file is only for those who have subscribed to the channel. Please subscribe our channel and help us grow. And whenever my friends you're sending us your reply, then always, always mention the part number while sending your answers. And that was all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.